All right, so did the uh, basement and rat? Yeah, pleasant sound. Had rats we couldn't deal with. You know what? Let's uh, close the basement door. Come on, do it. You don't want anything coming up and out of there, even though nothing will. If this bow and arrow set we should probably pick up soon. I want to get into that. Uh, I want to get into that uh, room with the gramophone. You know, the dancers. But those spiders won't let me through. I did look it up. The spiders are indeed invincible. But what I'll try first is a couple things upstairs. I am not going... I am not going down that dark corridor just yet. What I want to do is see if this ghost reacts to the gramophone playing the Blue Danube. Yeah, not in the way I like. Are you gonna come for me? Yeah, let's uh, load our game. Let's go ahead and try playing the other song. I haven't listened to it yet either. That was where we found the gramophone in the first place. Pretty decent Foley sounds there. Oh, why didn't I use these just to reload my revolver, huh? Do that. Oh, the revolver's loaded. Okay, let's try playing the other record. It's too bad the words on the bottom of the screen go so fast. I think it might be because the cycle rate is too high. I'm not going to turn it down, though. This is uh, the levels uh, GOG decided was correct. And I'm fine with it. So instead of having that glitch and keep playing, let's just... Well, not glitch, but instead of having that continuously play, let's go back here with the bullets and I did accidentally look something up online because like I forgot what I was looking I think the rats the rats are indeed invincible that's not a glitch but uh, this night there is a way to beat them it's by simply throwing this stupid heavy statuette at it I was thinking like I'll need a club or something but because all other weapons were just coming off as white sparks, which I believe means it's not getting hurt. Of course, I don't think a knight would bleed, but nothing was killing it. Anyway, let's uh, go ahead and try throwing this. Throw. Yeah. I'm thinking that's probably all I needed that statuette for, but... You know, let's just go ahead and leave it here for now. Though maybe it makes for a good throwing weapon, still. Just gonna do that. And save. Now, according to that book, it looks like uh, we could fight the pirate captain with the saber. But probably the sword will work just as well, I think. Because the saber broke, right?
Okay, let's give this a go. Aha! I hope you don't just randomly break. I was saying, like, fight it on the right or something, so I'll try using the right attack. Am I hitting him, or is he just backing off? Oh, he got me there. Oh, it's a hit. Aha, he blocked. This is intense. Closer. There we go. Yeah, take that and that. We got him. The invincible pirate, indeed. Okay, so let's leave the book here. Take a quick look around. Guess he can't run backwards. Probably makes sense, huh? What do you know? This uh, random bucket doesn't mean anything. Not getting any messages about finding nothing. So that was the other weird book about the end of that uh, possibly start of the cult person, I think. Demonia. Oh no, this is about the sign resembles a blessing. Little finger and Save the first th finger. Don't need this book either. Anything else I could put down here? I think I'm good. It's gonna be locked, right? It's locked! Gee, I wonder if this key will open it. Oh, right, spacebar. That's gonna to go to that dancing room, right? Key to the dance hall. I'm going to be risky and assume that these only... Oh wait, there's one other door in there. Anyway, I'm going to be risky and assume these just open up. Single doors and such. After trying the other door in here. I thought I closed the spider door. So I don't know what that white spot is there. I tried searching before and that didn't do anything. It's kind of odd they made close a separate command. Why not just... Come on, dude. Why not just make close along with open and search? There's also supposed to be a jump command sometimes. Ooh. So that's where I put one of my extra knives. The knife doesn't seem to break really easily. What am I doing? I'm saving. And I'm gonna open up this door with the key, maybe? It wasn't opening before. It's locked. Oh no. Right. 
really still locked. That's lame. All right, so let's play that other song, which they'll probably like better. <sighs> Come on, really? I wonder if I could do something based on which song is playing. Let's play the one in the red case again. Now what if I touch the ghost? It's interesting and loaded separate angle here. not the right decision, was it? What a pain. All this different music and it's doing nothing. And seriously, is that nothing right here? It really looks like there's something to pull or... Whatever. I think there's just that dark hallway now, huh? I have a lighter. Do I really need a matchbox? Did I keep a box? No, that's a biscuit box, okay. I'm going to have trouble returning from that uh, section with the throwing axe, so let me see if there's something I could do. wonder if I should leave the gramophone and everything right here. I'm going to do it. And if I could use it at the other place, I'll just have to come back for it. Whenever you try to use the lighter or whatever, it says... It says that the, uh... Light's already lit, so I'm not even sure if it's worth carrying these anymore. All right, time to go upstairs. What's in here again? Oh, the smoking room. It's a book. Locked door. Kind of weird about the locked door. Usually the keys for them are found in the same room. 
Why am I getting a glitch like that right here? What's that indicating? You know what? I think there might be a issue here where I'm not seeing an item that's supposed to be on this side of the door. Because I did accidentally read something else online too. I got rid of it. Apparently there's supposed to be a set of sabers in this room. I'm thinking maybe it's there. And you're supposed to put your saber on the other side of the door maybe and this door opens. Unfortunately, it's not showing. I mean, that may or may not be the case. We'll worry about it later. I don't even remember where I left the saber. Thinking that main hallway downstairs, huh? So we have that one other section we could look at over here. just run. Maybe take the lantern out already. I wonder if I could just like burn it down or something. Oh, will this work? Ho ho ho. Yeah, look at me. I'm clever. Sometimes. Then we could safely traverse this passage. Look at these pretty pictures. A lot of doors, that's never a good thing. Uh, windows. Is this where it got dark or Oh, come on. Where's that coming from? Like, for real, where are you? And I thought it was dark down there. So now I'm confused. There's another painting. Whatever. I guess I could go here safely, though, and that's the point right now. Oh, so I guess I managed to get in here before. I don't remember opening a door, but... light a lamp with a lighter. Oh, crud. Is that because I turned off the lights? 
Well, let's see if I could fight it. Um, hmm. That's a very weird... A visual display. Let's see how it attacks. Alright, well, this time let's go in there and keep the light on, see if that thing appears. Okay, so it's hard to search around when, uh... Yeah, there it is, great. I was just saying it's hard to search around when you have this oil lamp out. Was that a secret door? Looks like it. It's not reporting anything. It's not letting me in there no matter what I'm doing. That does look suspicious, doesn't it? Let's try looking around the rest of this area. Of course, that dummy has to be right there. I didn't see anything in there, but... Ever go down this one? Looks just like it. Really, look at that. Nothing important in this bookcase. Go quicker. And that ghost can't follow me. Yay for that. Well, I'm officially starting to run out of ideas here. Let's see if the lights are back on. Of course not. <laughs> That guy is still in the way, because why wouldn't he? <laughs> Do I have to put a book in there? That might be the solution. Let's find a book. I just hope they're not going to be picking me like it has to be a certain book.
while we're here, let's test my, uh, theory. So assuming that's where the good one is hanging. No. So what was that random thing I read online? This is what happens when you just read random thing with jigs online, huh? Okay, so let's save, try the book, and then I'm going to cheat. Watch them ask for you to put a specific book in that bookcase, huh? I see two sets. Oh no, that's a double door on the other side. Okay. And now I'm getting the weird symbols again. Not weird, it's like it's stuck in shift for some reason. Oh, you know what? I just have an idea. Let's load the game. I just put it down. Awesome. Kind of convenient that I could light the whole room, huh? Trap? I think I'm actually trapped. Let's just try running past this thing. And I don't think it's gonna work. It's not the proper solution either. Of course, I wasn't even running. Ha. 
another book. And another book. Okay, this is starting to get ridiculous. <laughs> nope, it's like the whole wall is a bookcase, and I don't have to. S there we go. How do I trigger it? Push. Probably have to put one of these books in it, huh? Well, let's have a good read. The Sons of the Sun and of the Shadows Lieutenant Lope de Vega's account of his astounding travels to the land of the Aztecs. Holy Christ! cried Captain Cortez, astonished by the strange rite we beheld. We found the savages half-naked. They were throwing balls of silver and gold at each other. They laughed as if demented, clearly maddened by some heathen drug. And yet, should one of them fail to catch the ball thrown in his direction, the poor devil was seized and dragged off to be sacrificed in their temple. Well, basketball used to be a lot more, uh, intense. As we discovered, this frightful game was a ritual most holy to them, and symbolized the movement of the heavenly bodies. The dropping of a ball foretold a catastrophe. That is what the Aztecs believed in their godless ignorance. Their countless deities could only be appeased through endless human sacrifices. The victim's heart, which was still beating, lay in the hand of the murderous priest. Totally normal. The interior of the temple was surprisingly cool. The weight of our armor, our exhaustion, even the burden of our suffering, they were all banished by a sense of awe that the crudely magnificent altar instilled. In the tomb-like silence, a deep voice chanted an incantation. The majestic statue of the water goddess, Chal Chi Huitlique, seemed to throb with vitality. Try to say that three times fast. This massive stone, draped in a golden cloak and studded with precious stones, was coming to life before our very eyes. Horror of horrors! The granite eyes of the statue, empty of life only moments before, were now injected with blood. We staggered back in amazement. Dom Jose was taken by a fit of convulsions. He tried to raise up his crucifix, as if to ward off an attack by demons. The heathen priest laughed cruelly. The statue's mouth cruelly. cracked in a deathly green. Bearing teeth sharpened to dagger points. This is not gonna end well. Captain Cortez cried, Attack! But it was no juice. We were glued to the spot. Efforts. We were unable to move. What? Never will I forget. Let us tell. Captain Cortez Fritz. We were un Captain Cortez Fritz. Alright, we just cut out the start of it. Our armor seemed to be bolted to the temple floor. Our legs weakened, and we collapsed in a thunder of steel. Only Cortez had the presence of mind to unsheath his dagger. He hurled it at the cackling priest. Four inches of the finest Toledo steel buried itself in the heathen's face. His blood spurted, splashing the now lifeless idol. We picked ourselves up with difficulty. Never will I forget that terrible moment. My companions, naturally enough, told tales of devilish enchantments cast upon our armor. Whatever the truth of that, I could not deny that the supreme god of the fourth universe had treated us as mere playthings. I am convinced 
that a terrible energy is yet contained within that heathen statue. A power strong enough to change a proud conquistador into a helpless puppet. Supreme God of the fourth universe? Hmm, okay. I only know one in the first and second universe. Don't know about you guys. Drawing of Chalchi Huitlique by Dom Jose de la Sierra, done before the destruction of the Aztec Temple of Tenochtitlan. Anyway, that was supposed to be a hint, I'm sure, to uh, that the statue can uh, defeat the armor, which I found out online because I'm a bad person. Unfinished chapter of Terra Incognita by Jacob Van Ostate. A hitherto unpublished fragment of the manuscript unearthed following indications furnished in the Vatican Library's Expurgatory Index. Uh -huh. In those icy and unwelcoming lands, the rights of wizards and healers are deeply rooted in ancient legend. Mysterious and cruel beings are thought to have ruled over the Arctic plains in times past. A cursed city, enclosed it by massive walls, is believed to stand to this day. It contains fabulous treasures and is inhabited by the degenerate descendants of those who instilled centuries of terror in the hearts of the people. Mm. These people, naturally placid, are seized with rage and horror at the very mention of the prisoners of the ice. Were these dreadful captives to be freed from their frozen cells, they would reap a horrifying tribute of human flesh. These blood-curdling beings may be invoked by certain ritual words. They can even be controlled, albeit with the greatest of difficulty. I admit to being impressed by these tales, repeated to me on many occasions and in a number of different places during my travels in the region. I have also seen troubling cult objects, sculpted in a material unknown to me. Another remarkable fact is that local Eskimos experience great distaste in pronouncing certain words, and invariably avoid saying them. I wonder if I brought that pot of human flesh into the dining room, if the zombies would have ignor ignored me. Here is a living example of the power that words contain. As it is said in the Bible, in the beginning was, the word. Not sure if that was supposed to uh, hint towards anything. Maybe I should get away from this guy. Okay. Let's do a save here. If Rocks Could Talk, or The Story of a Louisiana Plantation, by the Marquise de Chamfray. After the criminal selling off of Florida by the foul usurper, my father elected to remain in this inhospitable land, where we were free at least to express our royalist feelings, and hope our country would come to its senses. In 1818, a certain Pickford bought up Ledoux's land after the poor fellow had ruined himself in unfortunate speculation. Pickford soon turned out to be the most loathsome human we had ever encountered.
It was an adventure of the worst kind, nouveau riche, and bloated with a grotesque sense of self-importance. First came the incessant army of men with shovels, digging into the mountain of earth that was to fill in the surrounding swamp. The undertaking was quite stupendous. We learned from a slave that the final objective was to connect the existing caves with another one of gigantic proportions. Oh, about the caverns underneath this property and like the one the pirate was talking about. Rocked by a mania of persecution, Ilya Pickford constantly fired his workers and hired new ones. He did all he could to keep anyone from learning about his plans. My father was amused and said, The poor fool will end up getting lost in his own cave. <laughs> and the walls went up and tongues started wagging. Our detestable neighbor had been a sailor a ruffian grown rich on questionable trade. These tasteful stories were told of him. Hmm. When the work was finished, Pickford invited us to the opening of his rambling mansion, which he named Derseto. My father asked what the strange name meant. Pickford answered, their seto reminds me of Astarte, the fertility goddess. Around here, the name is Shub Nigarath, I believe. That a name so steeped in evil should be said aloud came as not such a shock to my father, as he himself confided in me some while later. We left immediately. Okay. In June of 1862, their seto was burned down in unexplained circumstances. It was undoubtedly the deed of some jealous Yankee or another. It was amazing to watch the servants rushing into the flames to try and save their bullet-riddled master. After that terrible night, their seto fell into ruin. Its blackened walls were soon overgrown, as human-built works always are, by ever-present nature. Jeez. Sounding a bit different in uh, this reading. In 1875, the property was eventually bought by a gentleman whose name was Howard Artwood. I was sorry that my father, who delighted in fine conversation, was no longer alive to enjoy the company of this new neighbor. Learned and well-versed in history, he had made a particular study of piracy. It was Artwood who told me that Pickford had commanded a ship that flew the flag of piracy. That explained the scoundrel's great wealth. Ah, the P Pickford. Was that the name of the pirate that uh, came over here to build all this stuff? Probably. Artwood was fascinated by Pickford and undertook a great deal of research in an attempt to find some treasures that he was convinced the pirate had hidden. He went through the ruins inch by inch. He then had the burnt-out house rebuilt exactly as it had been and refurbished the library that had miraculously escaped the flames on the night of the Great Fire. Artwood set about studying every volume in that library and often talked to me of his research. He was a handsome widower deeply attached to his son, Jeremy, who was later to become a professional artist. Artwood worked incessantly, first from the room I offered him, then from his own freshly restored home, which he rebaptized Derseto. I imagine he hoped to enlist the help of the god of good fortune in his treasure hunt. As far as I have ever been able to tell, all his searching came to nothing. There were no lost treasures to be found at Derseto. I learned of Artwood's death while I was in Paris. But that, as they say, is another story. So who is this person exactly? One who is working uh, for them? If rocks could talk, or the story de of a... After the criminal selling off of Florida by the foul usurper, 
My father elected to remain in this inhospitable land, where we were free at least to express... It was uh, whatever. So, that's the history of this house. Let's see if I can make sense of this here. That's a staircase on the left. Those must be fireplaces. That staircase leading to... Oh, that's the kitchen, right? The lower left. Kitchen, dining room. Don't remember that staircase. Oh yeah, it's there. That's the garden. It's the dancing room. The upper right is the hallway with the pirate. Then that's the smoking room and the door I couldn't get into. What I don't understand is why they're marking the chimney in the lower left room where the stovepipe is. Fireplace. Is this map supposed to help me in any way? There's nothing of interest there. Fireplace. Fireplace in the dance hall. Staircase. Yeah, no, no new information. When the work oh, well. was finished. Fragments of the Book of Abdul. In the antique city of Dead Relia, Cthulhu dreams and waits. In the pit of time, the unspeakable lies in wait. That is not dead which can eternal lie. Relia, your blocks of stone seal the ritual that gives birth to fear. Cthulhu for Tang! Cthulhu for Tang! Aya! Aya! <laughs> right, uh. Your blocks of stone seal, seal the ritual, okay? Pit. Scary, scary, yada, yada. Let he who knows how to invoke the stones act. It is time. Let the shadow of Cthulhu darken the sky. May the servitor of the black goat of the woods with a thousand youngs sound his flute in honor of the unspeakable. Remember? Cthulhu for Tang! Cthulhu for Tang! Aya! Aya! If I remember correctly, you just plunge your hand in, into the dirt and pull out a scary sacrificial knife. May he who may not be named cast his withering gaze upon the unbeliever. For he is the door, the key, and the guardian of the door, and holds you now in his immense power. All right, just some spooky flavor text, I guess. Oh. <laughs> what the heck? I suppose I shouldn't read that book, huh? Here. Let's read it out here. So, 11 health, okay. Jeez, this game's ridiculous. Right in the May he who. Yeah, okay. So every time you read it, you get hurt. Let's see about this. Well, let's see if we could fight that stupid. 
monster here. I could see a good angle. All right. Well, I guess that means it's invincible, huh? Looks like I could use a different kind of weapon on it. Alright, let's see if we could do anything with this bookcase, or, you know, cabinet. Let's also see how far down this, uh, lantern's gone. Surely it hasn't gone down while I was reading. Has it gone down while it's been on the floor? 85? Probably. Keep searching the bookcases, be sure we got everything. I'm thinking it might be just for the whole entire length of the bookcase. Random scary sounds. gonna hope that means we've searched all the necessary spots for books. Let's also see if the lantern's gone down. So it was 85 when we checked the other time. Yeah, it does keep going down, okay. So let's let the ghost come out a bit. Let's see about putting the red book where that mechanism is. And also, picking up this uh, Can I pick it up? No, oh, I thought I'd be able to use it to guard the Indian. Well, I suppose not. Not sure who's scarier. So does it work if I keep doing that? No. Not how those worked. Maybe I have to push it.
Okay, I'm just gonna stop here for a minute. I'm not gonna. We're not at a dead end per se, but there's a couple things I want to check on. Anywho, be right back.